Good afternoon, Dapo. How are you doing? You well? I'm okay, man. I'm okay. A little groggy, a little tired, but I'm good, man. I'm good. You sure? Good. We're, 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 we need you in, in tip-top condition, you know, because I get the sense <laughs> that you're you're on a mission. You've got work to do, and we're, we're here to talk about your, uh, your latest part of that mission, the new book, Hey You. Um, yeah. Uh, if 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 you would permit me, sir, I wanted to start off with a quote that I read on the back of the book that really got me interested. It reads, I wrote this book uh, in the hope that it might help future generations of Black children to feel empowered and seen. Your mm-hmm. words. Let's start mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So what do you want to know? What do you want to know about those words? Do you want to know? Uh, you want, well, you want well, to I, 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 I want to know. Yeah, well, I want, you to, I want you to embellish, really, because it's it's... For me, it's clear what the objective is. Um, why did that? Why did you feel that needed to be known um, from before um, you even opened the book? And what's what specifically would you like to to kind of bring about in terms of empowering and helping young black children to be seen? Right. There's another excerpt from inside the book which this answer relates to, which is my own journey. You know, at what point in my life did I start to feel empowered and seen? Right. And for me, that wasn't until like my mid to late 20s. Do you know what I mean? And what I was hoping to achieve with this book was to have that happen sooner for future generations and current generation, you know, of of young children to have that happen sooner for them. Because I just kind of I was asked this question halfway through um, editing the the first draft of the book. I was asked this question by my editor. He was like, Ardaps, you know, when when did you feel first feel empowered as a young black person? And yo it hit me like a brick like when I really looked at it I was like whoa it wasn't until I started doing my own research into us you know as people in in the modern world that I started to kind of come across things that lifted and empowered me and made me understand you know the resilience that we have as black people the strengths that we have as black people the connectedness of us all around the world and then I just thought to myself wow that wasn't until I was in my 20s what would it have been like if I'd felt that at a younger age do you know what I mean so that changed the, the the text that I was writing because the first draft compared to what you guys ended up with in that book very different right very very different it changed it completely and I started to write from that place where I was writing to future generations in the hopes of just having that snap point happen for them at a quicker quicker stage you know um yeah without rambling I think that kind of answers the question all right let me let me let me take it away from the book for a second then to talk yeah. about your mindset and and how you felt prior to you know, how you felt in your mid to late 20s in terms of being empowered. If that mm. was the point of empowerment, I want to mm. find out what made you feel so. But before that, how were you feeling as a young black man to finding be, his way? All right, to be honest, it's like uh, the best way to describe it is like being lost but not knowing you're lost. Right? And I think you know, the society that we live in does a very good job of that with us. Like we're given certain narratives that we have to fit into you know, certain social parameters that we can't go beyond. All these things are just put there, sometimes blatantly, other times very subtly and sinisterly, they're just put there. And we, we, I'll be honest, this is no critique to us, but we do a remarkably good job of following those, do you know what I mean? We do, we do a remarkably good job of staying within those parameters, within our own community. We chastise our kids when they follow um, career paths, for example, that aren't within what we know you know, or what we're known for. Like we do a remarkably good job of reinforcing those stereotypes, you know? And I think up until that point where I started to kind of read more about people that had come before me, great things that people had achieved that looked like me, up until that point where I could pick my own literature, for example, and start reading not what was offered to me in school or what was offered to me in the household that I came from. Up until that point, I was towing the line. Do you know what I mean? I was really towing the line. So once I started to read a bit more and, and find out that, you know, um, there are different types of blackness. Do you know what I mean? Like there are, we're not a monolithic thing. We're not this hip hoppy, sportsy. We're not that. That's not the extent of what we are. We're so much more than that. Up until I started to educate myself and find that out, I was towing the line, you know? And once I started to find that out, there was a scary space of... It, it, people talk about, you know, how great it is to discover that your inf- your potential is infinite, right? It's actually one of the most terrifying things because 
a, it's just like the doors open and there's no training to walk through that door. You know, you haven't been, especially from a young age, you haven't been empowered. You haven't had all that stuff, which I was trying to do with this book from a young age. And now you kind of have to unlearn. That's the best way to put it. You have to unlearn all the stuff that you've been taught as a youngster regarding where you fit in and what you're capable of and what you can do. And, you know, you have to kind of come up with a new way. And that's that's terrifying. And that takes time. So that's what I was hoping to be able to do with this text is to save some children that time by showing them, you know, the greatness, the, 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 as much as we can within an 18 spread picture book, because that's what this is. It's a children's picture book. Um, showing them as much as we can within those limitations, how great we are and how much potential we have, you know, at a young age, I think it does a lot for you or could do a lot for you. You said that um, the book was born out of an emotional response to 2020 and all of the things that went on in that year, I guess, for a lot of people, uh, the George Floyd um, mm -hmm. saga was was the catalyst for a lot more open dialogue, um, mm -hmm. a lot more of the narrative that probably was only discussed within a certain community, was exposed, mm -hmm. um, making, I guess, bringing about an awareness that wasn't there prior. Um, talk about purpose coming from pain um, as exemplified by this book and, and what else you were feeling as a black man during that period and, and what else you kind of used that to motivate you to do? Um, so the immediate book, the actual book, the, the written book, the project, right, was a response to that. But all the stuff that was in this, all the, all the goals that I tried to achieve with this book are ongoing things that, um, you know, existed before the whole George, George Floyd thing happened. Um, a goal of mine with this book was to shine a spotlight on black talent, right? That's why we have 18 illustrators, you know, helping me bring the work to life. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because there is a huge, um, how can I put this, uh, deficit? Can I use the word deficit? When it comes to the amount of black illustrators yeah. versus, yeah, mm, yeah versus, versus white talent, there's this mm. huge, huge gap, huge gap. Like up until a certain point, a couple of years ago, I was one of two black British illustrators in the children's book um, illustration world, right? right? In the UK, I was one of two. And of the two of us, I only had one book out, whereas the other person had a 34 year career prior to me coming into the game. And I'm 38 years old. So they've been working since I was four, right? And there hasn't been anyone else, you know, of prominence since then, which is insane to me, considering the amount of talent that there is in our community, right? Um, so one of the goals I had when I came in was to try and open that door, like wedge it, find out why this is the case, bring the talent forward, put a spotlight on them, and then just help them develop and give them access to the industry up until a point of publication. That was one of my goals. And that's what this book also helped me achieve. Um, I guess in answer to your question as well, you know, what did I feel was the question around that time, you mm -hmm. know, that, that th there was a lot. I, what I mostly felt was exhaustion. Like, because these conversations that are now being had on public domains, we've been having them. Do you know what I mean? We've been having them. Like, it's not new. George Floyd is not the first Black man to die at the hands of the police in America or in the UK, right? This has been going on for decades, right? If not centuries, if we're going to count past transgressions of, of white supremacy, right? So we've been having these conversations and George Floyd it was a wave of exhaustion that I feel like the black community felt as a whole globally, right? And that connectedness, that was very apparent at the time that, you know, the George Floyd thing went down. But what I wanted to tap into was that it's not just pain that connects us, right? Our, our, our experience, I believe, is a very shared experience across the board, regardless of where you are in the world. It's a shared experience, whether it's pain or joy. So what I was hoping to do was to tap into the joy that comes after the pain, if that makes any sense, with this book. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. I'm not sure if that actually answered Yeah, question. I mean, to be honest with you, asking any Black person you know, how they dealt with 2020 is very much a loaded question, right? So Yeah, because um, I, I, I didn't want to get I, I, into, yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to, I, I, I would love to, but like, it's, it's a difficult thing to kind of get into because I, I had mixed emotions, but the most prevalent ones, the ones that dominated 
were exhaustion and then just wanting to do something good for us. Yeah, that's that's kind of um, what I wanted, that, that whole narrowed focus on how did it succinctly mm. impact on you? And, and that's what I get normally when I ask it because it, it, so many layers, so many ways that we could take the conversation. Mm. Um, you touched on the, on the illustrators and I did notice that. I wanted to touch on those because um, that's one of the things that jumps out from the book is, you know, the, the quality of work and the fact that you chose to showcase 18 different illustrators. I mean, pulling that together couldn't have been, <laughs> couldn't have been easy given, yeah, okay, obviously you had this great ambition, right? But pulling it together must have been, must have been a task in itself. Talk about that process. How did you narrow it down to 18? How did you even roll out the opportunity, choose? Like you said, there's a dearth of, of recognised talent, but a huge pool at the same time. So I came into the industry in, like as in the industry, not the not actually published. I came into the industry in 2018. That was when uh, we had signed our book deal and there was a, like, a little buzz around this kid coming into the industry. Um, and that was the time when I started to find out what the stats are regarding how much or how little black talent there is in the industry. Um, initially, you know, my, my response, uh, just full disclosure, I'm a South London youth raised and born and raised South London. <laughs> we've, all got, we've all got our cross to bear. Don't, don't worry about it. Hey, 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 hey. It's, it's a cross I'm happy to bear, man. We are, we're, we're, quite, we're quite direct in a lot of ways. We don't, we don't you know, we, we have a very short span for, for BS, basically. Um, and we're, res, we're resourceful. All the youths that I grew up with are very resourceful youths, to get me. And I think, to be fair, that's not exclusive to South London, but, you know, I have to big up the South whenever I can. But... Um, <laughs> One of the things for me, as, as, and even coming into it at this age, I'm so used to doing things myself and not waiting for people. I don't follow the protocol that they have in publishing, which it, it, can, it can be so polite. Everybody can be so polite. It's to the detriment, basically. And it's just dead that. So, okay, you're telling me there's no Black talent. Why? Oh, we can't find the talent. Oh, the talent's just not out there. All right, cool. Let me put a call out on Twitter and see what happens. Put a call out on Twitter. It went nuts. Talent was coming in every, every orifice, everywhere. Talent just pouring in everywhere. Okay, now we have a thread of Black British illustrators. Now I'm noticing publishing houses coming in, sampling from that thread, taking bits and pieces. So I've done your work for you, basically. Cool, I'm not mad. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for the talent. Calm. So off the back of that, um, Macmillan was one of the publishers that I'd signed another book deal with for another series. So I, they brought me in, which was the first time any publisher had done this. They brought me in, they sat me down, they asked me, what can we do to support your efforts to find and, and um, nurture black talent? I was like, oh, okay. Well, if, you're, if you guys are willing to open your doors, I've got an event I'd like to put on, right? A networking event for the Black British Illustrators. So I did that. We had um, capacity for 30 people. We had 60 people put for come forward right so that shows you there's lots of people who either have the talent or want to find out how to develop what they have right so we did an event for 30 um i got various um entities from outside of publishing to come in and kind of help us there's a company called book trust and what book trust do is they try to um they try to kind of um not control but kind of facilitate the content that's being put out to children in the UK so to make sure that it, it has the diversity that reflects the communities and also to make sure that the quality is at a high standard of and, and also to help kind of help the literacy um, situation in the UK because it's not as great as it should be basically so they came in they helped out with that as well they were present you know and I was trying to not only um, we did we did a portfolio search for the people off the back of that as well where you could have your work looked at by a professional who works in the industry and get feedback which is an opportunity that I don't think people get enough of publishing houses could do this just like that but they don't right so we did that but the plan was to show people the steps because people on the outside looking in, you just think, draw the pictures, done the dance. But that's not how it goes. There are so many more steps that people don't know about, right? So, for example, you could be sitting here laboring to become a children's book illustrator, thinking, oh, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to be an illustrator. I want to be an illustrator. But what you're really good at doing is design, right? It has you working in the industry, but it doesn't have you, because the prized positions are author and illustrator. And that's how most people from the outside think of it. Right. But there are other there's editor, there's designer. There are so many positions that have you working in the industry, learning. Right. And hopefully building yourself up to then segue and become an author or then segue and become an illustrator. But we don't think about that. We only think about 
you know, those, it's very narrow minded. And I was trying to kind of help people expand that to see that there are possibilities, ways, other ways to get into the industry. It was a, it was a successful event. It led to the creation of the, uh, a closed Facebook group that I have, which is still running. And what the Facebook group um, was hoping to do was to carry the vibe and just keep it going in 2019. Right. So I've already established con connection and communication with various illustrators, uh, black illustrators in the country and also outside the country through those efforts. So I already had a long list of talent. Right. And some of the talent I've worked with personally to help develop, you know, had uh, we've done mini mentorships. We've done various things to help them really get their work up to a point. Um, and also because of the exposure that the thread created. Right quite a few people started getting publishing deals off the back of that. So I've kept in touch with those people and just followed their career progression, helped them with various problems because some of them were unagented and they had to represent themselves. So I helped them with various problems that they've had with publishers, all the rest of it. And I guess everything was unknowingly um, leading up to this opportunity. So when the opportunity came to do this book, I was already busy. I'm currently working across like four different publishing houses I'm doing a lot of work at the moment so I was still busy but um, my editor unbeknownst to me he had gone to his bosses and he'd asked them you know what can I commission Daps to write this book because of a tweet that I put out when George Floyd died the tweet was around how children's books are used to talk about various different things gender um, LGBTQ issues all these things but we never talk about race in a way that that kind of helps the people that we're talking about right and that's what I put out there, the tweet. And he saw the tweet, he took it to his boss. His boss was like, yeah, Daps, if Daps has got an idea, commission him. So Joe came to me, he was like, Daps, um, I want to commission you to do a book. I'm like, yo, pump your brakes. I am not um, an intellectual on racial discussions by any means. And he was like, no, nah, this is a children's book, Daps. It's, it doesn't have to have all that stuff in it. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I could do that. Went away, did the thing. And then we came back and we were looking at how much time I had to illustrate and I was like you know what I can't fully illustrate a book with all the stuff that I've got to do so you know what how about we spread this and we give people other people the opportunity to help me tell this story one because I can't do it on my own given the time limit and two because blackness isn't monolithic so it would be great to have other illustrators give an input based on my text and translate because you know pictures work differently to, to words so they can bring something to it that isn't necessarily in my text, but it's their experience of what I'm writing about, right? And yeah, that's how it, it happened. Um, the task itself wasn't as hard because of the buildup that I'd had before. I already had a long list of people that I wanted to work with. So we reached out to them. Pretty much everybody said yes straight away. Um, a few people kind of had a change of heart. Things happened outside of their control. So they had to pull out. Maybe two or three people had to be replaced, but the list was long enough that that wasn't a problem. Um, Things I had to make sure of, I was intimately familiar with um, their, their, um, their work because I have their work. I've bought work from them. I've got books that they've worked and I've got prints that they've sold. So I know all their work. So what we had to make sure of was how was this book going to flow given the fact that everybody has such different styles, right? So I came up with a color palette from the first couple of images I did in color. And the idea was to have this as a base palette and you can pick um, a, a color to focus on, or you can use the whole palette, or you can use elements of the palette and then add to it, right, for your work. But once we've got this base palette set, once you put all the work together, regardless of the styles, it should still look like it belongs, right? Mm. Another thing we added was the sunflower pattern. Um, I didn't want this to be a generic story in that we have one key character that looks exactly the same going all the way through the book. Again, we're not monolithic. So it was important that we have as many different types of black people as you can come across as the main character for the spread. But how do we identify who is the main character in our story? The sunflower pan. So that was the one kind of limitation apart from the, the suggested color palette that they had. So those two things to help ground it. And then from that grounding, you can go off wherever you want to go off. You know, as long as you're telling the story that's in the text, you can mm. just go crazy. And they did. And man, what they came with, I wasn't ready for at all. I'll tell you a funny story. It forced me to up my game. So basically, we didn't have a cover 
um, design. I was still kind of thinking, what am I going to do for a cover? And then I saw the first draft of everyone's work. And I was like, there's no way I'm getting stunted on in my own book. So I went away, man. I dug deep. And then we came out with that cover. I, iron sharpens iron, they say, my listen, friends. So, listen, you know, absolutely. Just, you you made a mention of, of the fact that it's um, this book's just, you know, it's not just for kids. It's as much for the parents as well. Um, kind of talk about that. What are you a parent yourself? I'm not a favorite. I'm situation. not a parent. No, I'm not right, a parent. Okay. I am a I'm a godparent, and that's a right. very recent development. My goddaughter's I mean, three, and my god, and my a, godson has just been born. It takes a village, right? So, so yeah. my, my, I, I, but I was interested in the fact that you you said on the back of the book that it's it's important for you that it's not just seen as something for the kids, but as much for the adults as well. Right. So what that came off of was, um, you know. I was acutely aware that I'm writing this book and it's for the black community, right? And again, I got this thing where I'm like, who am I? Do you get what I'm saying? Who am I to be writing, to, to think that I can write something for the community? Do you get what I'm saying? So I just wanted to kind of ground myself and I put together a small focus group of friends and people that I know that can kind of hold me accountable for what I'm writing and what I'm saying, right? And what I didn't bank on was them reading it and having a visceral reaction to it right? People were crying, bro. People were crying. And I'm sitting there like, I'm sorry, man. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to make you, no, no, that's, these are tears of joy. And a couple of my brothers were like, that's fun, the kids. I want this book. I'm going to read this to myself every morning. So, you know, that's where I was just like, raw. this is connecting with adults. Like, and some of the testimonies and testaments and stuff that I've had since the books come out have moved me to tears because I'm just like I didn't bank on that do you know what I'm saying I was hoping it would connect yeah but you know it was it, it's gonna happen it might not happen who knows do you know what I'm saying and when people are telling me yeah I read this book man and it moved me to tears yo that's big so for me that just meant like you know what this I, I have to make people understand that this isn't just for kids this is for anybody who, from the community who can get something from it do you know what I'm saying hey you is available now Dapo Adiola, thank you for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Talk no about worries, um, where, why, why hey you? I think I know, but why hey you? It's so wild, man. Honestly, I just started writing. Um, initially, it was like, what am I? How am I going to write this? Okay, so I'll write a letter, right? And how do you start a letter to someone who you don't know? Say hey you in it, and I wrote it, and then because we, we didn't have a title again it was the project untitled project so I went back and I looked at it and I was like wait a minute this is a title so I pitched it as a title and immediately everyone was like yeah this is it so I was like okay cool if you guys are happy I'm happy let's roll well you're just a brother from South London but it's hey you to the world my friend as far as I can see so Listen, good I hope good so, luck man. with everything yeah good I luck with so. everything appreciate it man all good man <laughs>